a lot of talk lately about the yield curve uh, and, you know, not a lot of common sense about what is really behind it, what it means, et cetera. The, the most common interpretation recently, which is a bad, wrong one, is that the yield curve, uh, as represented by the two-year government bond rate subtracted from the 10-year government bond rate, has narrowed. And as it narrows, it might invert. And there's this legendary, partly true, partly false mythology, because a lot of mythologies have some truth to them that inverted yield curve implies recession. And that's the, the, the fear, the bugaboo, the, the, the big thing that people chatter about. The yield curve, of course, is a representation of government debt all along the maturity schedule from very short term debt all the way out to 30 year debt. And it's a continuum because there's all those maturities and there's an interest rate associated with every one of them. And traditionally, when I was young, you learned to think of it instead in terms of very short-term debt and the interest rate on it compared to the 10-year uh, government bond. And that when that got flat and or short rates, flat meaning the same rate, or short rates got above long rates, that that could signal recession and has happened often before we've had recession. But that's not what's important. That what's important is what that represents that would cause recession. What that represents that would cause recession is simple, and it's easily understood. The core business of banking has always and everywhere been taking in short-term deposits as the basis for making long-term loans. And the fatter the spread between the two of them, the bigger the profitability on subsequent loans that banks would make, other things equal. So when that spread is big and getting bigger, banks become ever more eager to lend. And it is the lending that is expansionary, if you will. It is the lending that makes people uh, have ready money to spend on projects, purchases, this and that and the other to amplify uh, what they're doing. When the banks won't lend, that becomes problematic. And when you move to where short-term rates are higher than long-term rates, the only way a bank can make money on a loan is if it lends to a less credit-worthy borrower at a higher rate than that that it gets its deposits from, which is inherently risky. So because it's the lending that matters, that tells you a couple things. One, you shouldn't pay attention to the two-year, 10-year spread because very little of the lending that's ever done is based on two-year time deposits. Most of the lending that's done is based on shorter deposits, which is why you should go back to the concept of short-term, like 30-day versus 10-year, 90-day versus 10-year. And that curve is not terribly... Uh, narrow right now. It's adequately steep. It's uh, almost, it's not, but it's almost 2%. And at that, uh, when you think about that, it leaves you, if you will, more comfortable, but it also leaves the banks more comfortable because they've got a reasonable margin to borrow at and lend against and make money so that they are ready to lend. And that's good. And we should want them to be. So don't get carried away with the two to 10 year spread the way so many people do. That's a wrong headed way to analyze it. And uh, don't think about the curve itself. The yield curve itself is what's important. It's what it represents in terms of bank lending. It's the bank lending that's important. And if you want, you just simply would do well on an ongoing basis to do a Google search on annual rate of bank loans, uh, both domestically and globally. Uh, to find out how that's proceeding over time. But I will tell you right now, it's proceeding very well. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Subscribe to the Fisher Investment YouTube channel if you like what you've seen. Click the bell to be notified as soon as we publish new videos.